Hey everyone, today we are going to continue on in a very uh, long spread out series that we've been doing with the drill index cards here. These things are a fantastic product. I really enjoy using them and I have my friend Drew with me to actually run through another one. So we're doing the Amy 556 drill. This one we have two targets at seven yards that are 10 yards apart. Uh, we're going to start on one of them, basically do a build drill while doing a speed read, uh, do a build drill, run to the other point, do a speed reload, uh, and then fire three rounds, run back to 12 yards, fire one round into the head box, which reminds me we need to tape over the head on that one. No oh, big yeah. deal. Uh, we can do that real quick. So we're going to be running through this. We'll see how it goes. You're going to be running your Glock. I'm yep. going to be running a uh, my T-Sauce Raider 1911 just for, for Grinzies. And then we might run it with our rifles or carbines, uh, rifles, uh, yeah. just so uh, just to have some extra fun. You'll have to excuse all the extra range noise. Obviously, this is a live range, so we're just going to deal with that. And uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be good. It's going to be fun. Let's get started. All right, so the way let's run this, we're just deciding this on the fly right now. Um, obviously, we're going for every shot in the A zone, uh, and then the head box on target two. Every shot outside the A zone is five second penalty. Does that work for you? All right, cool. So let me make sure I'm ready to go here. All right. All right, so we got some, these were from before, and they're marked with a marker. Plus we know we're shooting big boy rounds, so we've got nice and clean on this target. Walk over the other one, and I'll tell you, seven yards is really far when you're standing back there with iron sights. Uh, and then we've got three impacts here in the A zone, and then we're counting the head box as a whole, so nice and clean. And that was 15.14. Added an extra reload in there for good measure. Yeah, an accident. All right. So he took the extra time, got a clean headshot, clean in the body. And then we've got uh, 12 nine millimeter holes in this for reasons that we'll talk about later. All right, three nice clean there. One right in the center of the A. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. And that was a 15.74, slower than the pistol, but I had a goofy reload in there. moment of truth so we had three impacts there that still counts as the head box in my book and that is six impacts the a zone not too shabby what was the time uh it didn't oh oh the, yeah you're shooting suppressed oh yeah wouldn't. we'll have to do it in the camera all right so that was the amy 556 drill pretty simple pretty straightforward not a huge round count but we still had some really interesting things happen uh so Drew is still uh, fairly new to when it comes to like formal, like shooting yeah. and training and that kind of thing. But you've shot guns quite a bit in the past. Um, but we noticed a couple things happen just with the difference of being on the clock and having the pressure of the camera watching. So why don't you talk about your first run and what happened there? <laughs> yeah, so 
my first round, I got my first six shots off. Nice um, and clean, by nice the way. Nice and clean. And then immediately started uh, taking off to start my speed reload to the second target location and just ate it right <laughs> into the gravel. My feet slipped on the gravel. Uh, um, I try yeah. to train in shoes that I wear normally throughout the day and which isn't like hiking boots or it's right. i mean i'm wearing i'm wearing uh sambas so there's no tread on them really and uh i went down into the ground but uh good experience but yeah. then what happened with your second round with the with your pistol the second round was a little bit of a lapse uh first section did the six rounds fine speed reload went to the second target location shot my three and then laps dropped my magazine instead of coming all the way back to the second target so draw my magazine but was just like it's faster i immediately just went to my belt got another one it added a bunch of time but um you know it's getting through the awkwardness of doing a drill that you've never done before is gonna you know help you if you ever have to do it for real yeah and so. i mean it, it's something that anyone who's ever done competitive shooting can speak to you'll have a whole stage planned out in advance and then as soon as the timer goes, your brain dumps yeah. everything. And you're just going and you, you know, obviously you can still be maintaining safety. You can still be, you know, doing your reloads and everything competently. But any pre-planning that you did completely goes out the window. Gone. And that's why I think it's really important to practice under the stress of a timer. Because literally, like e even when we haven't had a camera going, when we've done stuff in the past, just the introduction to that timer and knowing that what you're doing is being recorded in some way changes the way that you mentally approach it and you're not going to get better at that level of stress inoculation without practicing under that level of stress mm -hmm. inoculation and again it's not a huge increase it's not like we have people shooting at us but just these little extra things that you can put on your brain to kind of task saturate yourself is going to be super super valuable and again not something you're going to do just picking up a gun off the tailgate doing a mag dump in the trash and then putting it back down um that's why i think stuff like this is really valuable and then again, in this case, uh, we have a couple different things going on as far as firearms manipulation. Not a lot of people practicing shooting on the move or reloading or doing manipulations on the move. So forcing a reload between these locations, especially with a 10 yard gap between them. Most people aren't running this far in drills that they set up for themselves, for what that's worth, if they're moving at all, on that out there. And then also making sure that you can turn up range, maintaining a good muzzle discipline, and then engaging a more uh, fine-tuned target from a little bit further away. So really simple drill, really low low round count, what, 10, 10 rounds total, um, but still a, a good yeah. piece of training. Yeah. And then we did it with rifles. And, you know, obviously when you're up this close, hide over bore is something to take into consideration. His GHM-9 that he's running, he's got the very excellent hull and aims on top, but then he's also got one of the Unity risers. Now there's multiple reasons why you might want to run that but you're gonna now be considering a lot more of that mechanical offset mm -hmm. as we saw. His impacts generally were lower than mine running that 5.56 AK, that, that BFT 5.56. So just little things that you, you get to get a taste for while also trying to do it under the time stress of the clock. Uh, what, what are your thoughts now after running your first uh, drill? Um, well, it's, I think a lot of these drills for me being new is um, it's exposing unknown uh, flaws or areas where I need to improve. Yeah. Um, so, uh, reloads, uh, especially with this, uh, this weapon that I haven't shot a ton aside from mag dumping in the trash, which, you know, shooting a suppressor is really, really fun. But, um, now I'm starting to actually try to use it more, um, in a more practical sense. So getting used to it, um, figuring out the manipulation of the weapon is new and different. And then also just, you know, every time I do one of these, it's an opportunity for me to learn how to do something better or faster or safer or um, more strategic, I guess. Yeah. And again, just putting yourself in a situation that a lot of us don't put ourselves into organically. You know, we, we came out here earlier this last week. Uh, and one of the things that I mentioned with some of the guys that we were out here with is, you know, we were practicing shoulder transitions with, with rifle and a lot of people will set up their sling in a way that works for them when they're just sitting in their living room. Okay. Yep. That works. But now you start throwing anything into the mix other than shooting 
and you start realizing, oh, maybe this sling placement doesn't work. And again, mm -hmm. these are things when people tell me, oh, this works for me. Okay, that's fine. But have you actually trained with it in situations other than just mag dumping in the trash? Because unless you're putting yourself into these situations to find player points in your gear, the excuse, it works for me, doesn't hold any water. Yeah, in my I, I just moved my just my attachment point to just try and be like, okay, when I was doing it the last time, my hand kept getting in the way or the sling kept getting away where I was in my hand. So I switched it back and now I'm going to try it. So see how it works. There we go. So. All right. Uh, anything else that you want to add about this drill? No, it's fun. I mean, I'm going to do it a couple more times, uh, probably the next time I come here, just to practice it. And now that I have this, I really need to get one of these decks of cards. Mm -hmm. um, every time we come out and we do one of these, they're always really fun and uh, really informative for uh, areas that you can improve. Yeah. So. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Again, that's why we do this series, although we've uh, taken a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, a lot, honestly, I haven't been uploading a lot of videos in general recently, but uh, we need to get better at doing this. And again, this is something you can go out and practice really cheap, really easy to set up uh, in just a really good time. If you're interested in these types of cards, definitely check out Drill Index. Uh, they make these available to anyone and everyone. They're really affordable. You get over 60 drills that you can practice or somewhere between 50 and 60 drills that you can practice. Just a really good opportunity. But anyway, with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching. Yeah, especially for the first time. And that's why I like doing like whenever actually possible, unless something terrible happens, like falling over, like yeah. doing my first run because it's a more authentic, like, yeah, I could curate it and I could do it a bunch of times. And, and then like, show the best one. Yeah, but, but that's not realistic. Yeah. Uh, go and step through. There we go. Yeah, a little bit closer to me.